All right, time to get ready for that new term. Hey class, Mr. G here. Today we're going over my top three things that you guys need to know before you start your next term. This, before we get into, into it, all right, let's go ahead and be honest here. It's a classroom management structure thing. This is polarizing because we each teach our own classrooms. We each have our own two cents that we like to put into that. This is by no means like, you gotta do this. No, this is a guide. All right, before we start diving into this, first off, let's go ahead and establish some basic ground rules. Number one, you were hired to be an educator because the principal thought that you would be the best person for that post. You've already got that in your corner of that you were, one, you were the one who was picked. So that's your classroom, that's your routine, these are your methods that you wanna use and stick with what works for you. But, also acknowledge the culture that you teach in. I teach in Atlanta. I, I've i been working in, I've kind of had the whole gamut of where I've had, I've had students who struggle with a lot of different things, either home life, substances, jail, parole officers, to um, no, pr no parents at home, uh, to weird living situations with uh, family members, halfway houses, I've had all that on one end. And then on the other end, I've had kids that were shipped into, and I, this, I'm saying exactly what the students told me. They were shipped here by their parents because the parents didn't want to come to come to America. These are kids who came from very wealthy households in other countries that were, they were sent here to receive an education and the parents were paying for top-notch education. That's what they expected. Uh, this is also the group of kids that um, mom, dad had million dollar contracts to do work all over the world, all different walks of life. So, I mean, I've, I've had the whole spectrum, but at the end of the day, these are all kids. They just have different gift wrap around them. That's about it. All right, everybody's basically the same. There's a little nuances here and there, but for the most part, it's all the, it's all the same. But that does play into the culture that you're working with. And if you don't understand the culture and you understand your position, then for the most part, you're fine. But you do have to have some finesse in some of the other facts. Starting off on the day one of class, what do you need to do? These are my top three things that I take care of. Now, day one usually is the, we're going over the syllabus. What are, what are the outlines for the class? Do you turn in projects? How do you turn in projects? Where do you put your name on a piece of paper? You have all of that, but I'm not going over that today none of that this is the important stuff for me number one before the students enter my room they understand I'm the one who's in charge so the first things first is setting up the pecking order pecking order is it is an older term again I'm from the south and we use different terms so the pecking order who is in charge who is the top brass for me and I've done this over years in different locations and it does kind of change based upon location but the kids are not allowed into the room until I allow them into my room I stand at the doorway and I and I don't actually actually I don't even say hi to the kids on the first day. But what I do is I silently motion them. So I'll I usually am leaning against my door. I have my clipboard or something in my hand that I, I'm that I always have. Side honorable mention note real quick. When I go anywhere, I have something in hand, be it a my composition notebook that I write my notes down in, my slate, my tablet that I write that I write notes in. I have something in my hands at all times. No one knows what you're writing down. No one knows what you're about to enforce, anything like that. But it gives them a sense of presence. And uh, I had a. I had an AP years ago who said, never walk into a meeting empty handed. And he meant that literally, not figuratively, literally. Uh, always have papers, always have a binder, always have a computer, always have something with you at all times. Uh, because it, it there is a sense of a visual, uh, 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 there's a visual component that people respond to. You have something going on and you have information. And because you have information, we're gonna go to you first. Little tip, again, setting up the that, that basic routine of who is in charge I have my students as they're, as they're coming down the hallway line up on the side I wait till about six or seven are in line and then I take the first two and I had a really weird room set up so I had it was like a hallway and then big room behind it so it, there was this hidden corner that for me was I hated it because it, it left that blind spot where I can't see if kids were hiding behind there and I had to be out in the hallway to do hall monitoring 
I hated that aspect. From day one, I had to set up and establish a, you're going in, you're sitting down, you're doing the work. There is no question about it. That is what I expect. Again, this goes back to another video that I said before. Consistency is key. Don't forget, consistency is key. I'll say it several times. As the kids were coming around, again, five or six are about in line. I take the first two, I bring them into the hallway area, that little trench and I, I set them kind of as my my end markers put one on one side put one on the other side here's what's going to happen we're all going to be rolling lining up in here in just a second when we do if two if they pass you you have detention why you fail to follow instruction i'm giving you the instruction of you they stand here they don't go past you they go past you you got detention clear yeah that's clear I always felt the need to have at least one kid. There's no nice way to say this. I scared my students often. Maybe it's because, again, I've said before, I have a strong personality. I'm also very, I'm a large guy. I've said before that I have a very strong presence in general, but let's put that into a visual perspective that we can all understand. Take Monsters, Inc. We know Sully. Sully's that big blue creature guy. He's funny, he, he's he's a good character to follow for the events of the story. But there are times when the the, He's very, very scary. And I have both ends of that in my everyday and I kind of keep that rolling. I come off fine overall, but at the same time, most of the time when kids first see me, I am the scary version. And I don't discredit that because it kind of goes towards my personality. It goes in my favor of like, oh, he's in charge. Let's not mess with him. Then I go back out to the outside where I can see into my room. I can see the kids standing in the hallway area there. And I can see the rest of the students standing in line. And as kids are coming down, I can tell that they got my class. As they're coming down, I kind of motion for them to stand in line. I don't speak a lot during that portion because the kids don't know what to do. The kids are questioning what's next. What's the next steps? Motion for over there. Motion. Kids, and this is really good, especially between your fourth grade to ninth grade. And ninth grade's relative because of high school. The kids take up the, the task of talking for you. Stand in line. He's, he's told us to stand over here. That makes your life easier. Feed into that. One of my students, they'll, they'll say that, and I'll kind of point them out. Nod. Good job. Kind of correct. Uh, I don't say good job. I give them the thumbs up. Give them the friendly nod of like, yeah, that's exactly what I want. Immediate feedback that they're doing the right thing. After I have the class lined up, or if I have a majority of the class lined up and I know that there's still more coming down, but we have been waiting there for 10 minutes. I've said this in other videos where that was supposed to be five minutes and it was closer to like 30 minutes. So we're staying outside my room for that long. I would I would tell them we're waiting out here for a few minutes. As soon as the class is here, we'll go in. I've got, I'm going over the first day stuff. Nonchalant, just cut and dry, not putting any niceness, floweriness. I'm not dressing it up at all. Flat and dry. This is what's going on. This is what's the next step. This is what I'm waiting on. Simple. I'm establishing the, I'm in charge. I've got a plan. You're going to do the plan. There's no option. That's it. There's, we're not talking about it, which does cut down on a lot of other things down the road, which is uh, disruptive behaviors, which I'm doing another video on. So stay tuned for that. Once the kids are down here or are fully down, then we line up in the front entryway to uh, to go into the class. I have them in usually two rows. You know that scene in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory where they're all crammed in the elevator that's way too small to hold people? It was like that. I tell them that we're lining up here. This is how we do. We start the class. We're starting the class off like this. We're going to line up at the end of class the same way. So when we go back down the hall, we get, we know what we got we to get done. I'm setting up these little procedure things start to finish so that I'm setting up that m the mindset of what my expectations are. Next, after we go over just a couple things that were there, I think that I had like the kiln room was down there, the supply closet was in that hallway, that's where I had my doors. It's setting up the process of what my room is. Again, I kept saying it, welcome to my room, welcome to my studio, this is my studio. They were guests in my studio. I am lying up on the back wall. Again, no one's sitting down yet. We're all still standing. We're doing this for like 30 minutes because I tell them from day one, this is my studio. Welcome to my studio. I encourage a lot of creative development in my studio, but I'm reiterating the same thing over and over and over. This is my territory. You are not in charge of my territory. And I'm not mean about it, but I'm just cut and dry, just black and white this is how it is. You gotta remember some basic things about kids. Kids need structure. They need substance. They need to understand what's going on because their brains half the time cannot form the thought of why do I feel this way? What is the reason why I'm at lack, 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 
What is the reason why I'm lack lashing? Uh, this is going to take a minute. What is the reason why I'm lashing out? What is the reason behind some of the stuff that I say? They don't have that concept, but they do have the concept of something is wrong and alarms are going off. So that's what I'm trying to mitigate now. I'm trying to mitigate you're in a safe space. This space is my space. And I'm going to make sure that you're having a very pleasant time in my space. That's the goal. With that said, I'm in charge, not you. That's how life is tough. I feel like the Dean from the Magicians, if you haven't watched that show, it's great. It is definitely not a kid's show and there's nothing kiddy about it, but it's awesome. Once I've, I've got them in the back and I've got them lined up, I'm going over basic house rules. These are the chairs. Chairs are optional. I have taken away chairs and tables before. They lined them up on the side. We worked on the floor for two weeks. Why? Because no one could handle working in a desk. And guess what? When we're drawing and we're out doing drawings outside. And I know this is going to be controversial. If you're standing outside drawing, you don't have a desk that you're drawing from. You usually have a lap board or a tray that you're working off of the same thing. You're just working on a floor instead of in grass. It's an option and options can be taken away. And I tell them that. And I tell them I, you know, I'm here to teach you. I'm here to provide you an education. That's what I'm paid for. And that's what I do. And I do I'm quite good at it because I've been here long enough. Again, I sound like a jerk. I'm aware that I sound like a jerk but it's establishing that this is how things work. I'm setting up that concept early on. One of those common things that we all say in education is you don't smile until Christmas. This is kind of that entire mindset, except I've condensed an entire first term of the year down into two days. I've condensed all of that emotion down into two days. So I don't have to sit there and play up like, oh, just putting that armor on, just looking grizzled all, long, all day long. I don't have to. Because I already established what I need to establish and either and it's cut and dry, you either did or you didn't. I'm not having any emotion. I'm not holding my brain. I'm not absorbing brain space into, oh, this person just didn't like me. This person didn't do well. I ain't got time for that. I only got time to make stuff and do stuff. I've got, to, I've got things to do. So I keep the ball rolling. Getting That bleeds us into my next part, which is second one, seating. Seating is not uh, free for all ever. Especially, here's the thing. If you have a class that's over six, you need a seating chart. Uh, why? Because it makes taking role a lot faster. It makes doing things and calling on students a lot faster. For most of us, we teach the whole school. I was the only art teacher at a school. I've never had another art teacher at my school. I've always been the only one. I have art teacher friends in the county and the districts and whatnot, but um, I'm the only one. I'm like Tigger in a lot of respects. But the seating chart makes things pretty invaluable. Now, even at high school level, having a seating chart, and I, and I tell the kids, everybody has a seating chart. And the reason you have a seating chart is so that I can take roll because I don't have time to figure out who's here and who's not here. That's a waste of time. I want to get to making stuff and, and keep the ball moving. I'm constantly explaining why I do things. I tell them, this is why we're doing it. I have a reason, this is the reason, and we're moving on forward. Right there, I've taken a lot of wind out of their sails as to them questioning why we're doing something. Not only did I tell you what we're doing, I told you why we're doing it, which is most of the issues that most students have as far as disrespectful behavior, uh, disgruntled behavior, negative behavior, anything that just is bothersome. I explain a lot of stuff. I'm making a video on that, so stay tuned because it's another one on the list. But seating charts make your life easier, so do them. Get them out of the way early on, knock it out. Uh, how you do a seating chart is completely up to you. I've had teachers who they pass out colored strips and if you had the same color strip, you all sit together. I personally took the time and I just wrote all the names down and kind of pulled names out of a hat and set them in order. Um, I did boy, girl, boy, girl for a long time and it works quite well. Some of the kids that you find out over time, like if I had one, usually by my second or third quarter, we all kind of knew who the students were and I'd go and ask other teachers, tell me about this kid. Um, if I had some that were questionable, and I'd get the two cents and I'd figure out where to set them. It's not a problem. It's something to do. And it just, it's being proactive and trying to be as positive and forward pushing as you possibly can. And then that brings us into number three, the kids need to know who you are. Now, as I said before, um, carrying over from just the last one, I give an, a reason why I do things. The kids are there to learn to receive an education. So explaining why you do things is part of that education. I'm, I like to keep my kids in the know of what's going on, why it's going on. If I know I'm going to be out, I tell the kids, I tell them like, I'm going to be out on this day, this day, this day, because, and uh, you've already got a sub, I've already got the video shot because the videos are a constant process for me. So the kids are never at a point where they don't know what's going on. So the kids are always got my back because 
I'm the boss, they're my workers, we're all moving together, we're keeping the train rolling. That's the goal, and I tell them that. I keep them in the know. So they know who I am, because I'm a man of my word, I know what I'm what I'm saying, and that's what I'm gonna be doing. I'm, I'm keep that in line. Also, I'm an artist. I work as a, as a functioning artist. I make my own pieces, I sell my own work, I get stuff out there, I put it in the space of, of the, the world. This video is a part of the stuff that I do. And my kids understand that. And I say kids, which is a very loose term because I teach a lot of non-kids at this point. Um, it's, it's high school plus is what I like to consider it. Most of my students are older, a lot older. Um, and that makes my life easier to express to them why we need to do a project, why we need to do things because they see me doing it at the same time. They know that I'm into geek stuff. We talk about geek stuff all the time. I, uh, when I, especially when I was in the elementary and the middle school range, having kids that saw this stuff and then I was really excitedly talking about it all the time. They loved coming to my class because I was interested in stuff that they were interested in also. So they fed into whatever I was ready to say because I created the atmosphere of who I am. I'm that weird teacher who does all this weird, cool geek stuff and we have a lot of good fun. You don't cross them. That's the key. So again, they know who I am from, the, from day one. They understand that process. With that said, and I've said this before, if you go back, I have a whole video section on how not to suck at teaching, and I, and I know I've at least said this in there three times. The kids know the side of me that I want them to see. I have a very distinct personality that I have in the school that I run, and I use it, and I use that a lot in the videos. You guys understand who I am and what I do and all this other stuff, but I do have a wall of where you see me professionally to where you see me personally, and I don't cross the two, and I keep them very rigidly apart. It's very much um, split personality disorder in the met in the level that I keep those two separate and I do that for reasons because the kids need to know you professionally that's all they need to know and I keep that ball rolling as far as possible and you know they they see my world which is the geek and the fandom kind of stuff which is a huge part of me as culturally but at the same time I'm to the point I'm clear I try and make things as less gray as possible because the more that they're understanding of who th who I am and what things are going to happen the more I have less issues I have great work I have a good rapport with my students other members in the staff in the building everybody's we're all on the same page together it's kind of one of those best nuggets that I can give you guys for day one use these however you see fit if you want to fine tune tweak them perfect that is your decision I'm only here to provide you some two cents into what I do that's about it so let's go ahead and wrap up classes we always do don't forget to like subscribe share all the various platforms get the message out there to as many teachers friends and other students as much as possible again um, if you guys had a question or comment or concern during today's class raise hands in the comments below happy to answer the questions for my classmates I will see you guys next class so until then later guys